In about 90 minutes, as we just mentioned, Mayor John Whitmire will have his public swearing-in ceremony. Our cameras will be there. We will be bringing you that ceremony live right here on KPRC 2 Plus now. But right now, we are going to spend time talking about the promise Mayor Whitmire has made for the first 100 days while in office. During the 7 o'clock hour, we talked about his promise to decrease crime in our city. Now, we're talking about his promise to resolve city tensions with the Firefighters Union. Joining us to talk more about this, President of Houston Professional Firefighters Association, Marty Langton. Good morning, Marty. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, good morning, Zach. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we do appreciate your time. Happy New Year. Uh, before we talk Happy about the future, uh, let's talk about the longtime labor dispute that many of us have heard about over the years uh, the city has with the union. What's the latest uh, here, the latest on this contract? Well, I can tell you that uh, for seven years, you know, Houston firefighters have been put through something that nobody should ever have to go through. That's not how we treat our first responders. Uh, the last administration is no longer here, uh, but the damage that uh, that that last administration caused uh, is something that Mayor Whitmire uh, will handle. And so Houston firefighters and paramedics uh, were the third largest municipal fire department in the nation. Uh, there's nearly 4,000 of us. Uh, and the men and women that go out there every day and put their lives on the line um, do so selflessly. And what they expect is people in leadership to treat them fairly and to do what's right. And what we've seen the last seven years is this mayor used millions of taxpayer funds to sue firefighters and paramedics. Uh, it is unconscionable. Uh, it is unheard of. And it is something that Houston Firefighters has stood up uh, to ensure that the families, the firefighters, the men and women, uh, are compensated fairly and are taken care of. Uh, we have a long storied track record of ensuring that what we say to those uh, in positions of leadership for a finite amount of time, uh, Houston firefighters were here before you, Houston firefighters are gonna be here after you. And suing your firefighters is not a solution and it is not how you uh, get things done. In fact, um, the last day in office, this mayor chose to once again show his, well, the previous administration, mm -hmm chose to show his vindictiveness towards Houston firefighters and tried to file an appeal uh, in the case that they just lost again in the district court, mandating that the city stop all of the uh, attacks and sit down and uh, negotiate a contract, not only for present, but for what the firefighters are owed back to 2017 and 18. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so uh, I know you've said the word contract many times. Uh, many people, when they hear that word, they think it's an administration problem. But in this case, uh, it really truly is a public safety issue. Yes. Well, listen, you know, public safety associations in Texas are extremely, um, yeah, you know, the right word I'm looking for is they're important. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, even that word, I don't think does it justice. Listen, when you have men and women that go out there every day and put mm -hmm. their lives on the line and they're there for the citizens on their worst day, um, we have to ensure we're taking care of the men and women. And under state law, Houston firefighters are owed a contract by right. And that was given to the firefighters by the voters of Houston in 2003. Uh, this mayor tried to declare the rights of Houston firefighters unconstitutional. And why does that matter for the average everyday person? Houston firefighters and firefighters across Texas cannot strike. Uh, that would be bad uh, mm -hmm. for all of the citizens of Houston. However, uh, what you see nationally, what you see in other areas is when there is a dispute, uh, there is a mechanism to ensure that there is a remedy. And what this administration has done, the last administration, excuse me, uh, has done is kick the can down the road for this administration. And I can tell you that uh, uh, Mayor Whitmire has been a long friend and supporter of Houston firefighters, has been in the trenches and has focused on ensuring that we get a resolution and that the firefighters are taken care of. Because ultimately, if we don't have firefighters and paramedics, we don't have people to go out there and to respond to citizens on their worst day. Yeah, sadly, it becomes political and, and the work they do every day is everything but political. Uh, Marty, right. talk to us about morale among firefighters right now. I'm hearing that it's at an all time low. Uh, uh, elaborate on this. Listen, uh, we, we're down. We've never seen uh, the, the kind of attacks against a public safety agency as we did for the past seven years. Um, the proof is in the numbers. We are down nearly 500 firefighters and paramedics. And so when the public talks about public safety, uh, what this last administration has done is only discuss 
uh, as it relates to police. Uh, what it has to be a conversation about in every other major city is public safety is of course inclusive of firefighters and paramedics because if we don't have those men and women saving lives out there, uh, you don't have public safety. And so at the end of the day, um, we're focused on moving forward uh, with Mayor Whitmire. We're focused on ensuring that uh, we fix what this last administration has broken. But I have never seen morale in the Houston Fire Department worse than it is uh, and worse than it has been in the past seven years. And this last administration knew uh, exactly what was going on. They knew that the staffing levels were down. We have units that are out of service constantly because we don't have the manpower. And what does that mean for your average ordinary citizen watching? It means that if you have a heart attack, a stroke, you're caught in a fire, uh, you need 911. Mm -hmm. It's going to take us a heck of a lot longer to get there. Why? Because we don't have enough people. We don't have enough units. And when it's your family and when it's your mother, father, grandfather, yeah. grandmother, uh, I promise you there is no sweeter sound than sirens coming mm -hmm. uh, to take care of you and to rescue you. And you can't do that without uh, firefighters and paramedics. Yeah. Not only that, but you have to pay them. Um, you can leave right now any firefighter, and the reason we've had a mass exodus is because firefighters are going to other departments where um, immediately you can start making double what you're making mm -hmm. here right now. Uh, I've been a firefighter and a paramedic for over 20 years, and I can tell you that the, the base rate of pay uh, right now uh, as a 20-year veteran uh, that I could go down to a department down the road and I could be making at least 30% higher wages and starting off the bat if I was starting my career. You can't treat people like that, and you have to take care of the most critical, most important asset of the fire department, and that's the men and women. They've been through hurricanes, floods, pandemics. They have been through everything imaginable, and they've shown up to work. Yeah. And we have a saying here, come hell or high water, Houston mm -hmm. firefighters are gonna serve. And what we're excited about is focused on this next administration, Mayor Whitmire, he'll be publicly inaugurated today. And I can tell you his commitment to public safety is absolutely inclusive of firefighters and paramedics and ensuring those men and women, uh, they're heard and they're seen, not just in words, but through action. Being acknowledged, yeah. The, these men and women show up every day uh, for their community. That perspective you, you gave really hits home. Uh, with that said, what is the biggest, most pressing issue the association wishes to resolve uh, with the contract? Well, it's, it's, it's very simple, really. You stop suing the firefighters. Uh, yeah. Stop challenging the rights of firefighters that the state uh, has already, the Texas Supreme Court has already said under uh, the last administration, Mayor Turner, you were wrong. Uh, do what you should have done seven years ago, and he still didn't do it all the way leaving office. Uh, so A number one is stop attacking the firefighters. Uh, sit down, we have to resolve the past issues. Uh, the second part is you gotta get a new administration in, in place. Um, this last administration, uh, the fire department administration, clearly did not have uh, the rank and file and the men and women and their uh, priorities and, and uh, their needs um, as something that was their guiding principle. It's unfortunate, but we've seen it time and time again uh, in this department being so large. You've got New York Fire Department, Chicago Fire Department, and Houston Fire Department. You know, we are one of the largest in the nation. And you have to have leaders that can understand that we have problems. You have to admit we have a problem, and then you have to work towards a solution. But if you have a fire department administration telling everybody, uh, towing the company line, if you will, because the last mayor didn't want to focus on the truth, mm -hmm. um, it's not going to serve the public. It's not going to help the public. We have to come together. We have to work collaboratively. And that's what Mayor Whitmire has continually done. Uh, in fact, Mayor Whitmire is the one that championed the bill to ensure Houston firefighters will never have to go through what this last administration put us through. Uh, he carried SB 736, which is a binding arbitration bill to ensure that we have safety and security in our contracts. We don't go seven years without a contract. Mm -hmm. uh, and most importantly, we're respecting what these men and women do every day. Uh, it is not easy to be a firefighter and paramedic in 2024. Uh, the amount of calls that we're running, the amount of uh, technical skills that are required over the past 60, 70 years, the fire service has grown. Basically, any time that you don't know who to call, the fire department is the one that's gotta be proficient in handling an emergency. And so we wanna recognize that, but we wanna work now collaboratively with this mayor because we can fix problems. First thing you've got to do is admit that you have one. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a lot of turmoil here, but there's also a lot of hope, and we're so appreciative of your time. Before I let you go, uh, people listening right now, watching, if, if they feel compelled and they want to help out, you know, you hear that morale is, a, is at an all-time low. Uh, if there's something they can do, if there's something they can do to uplift these men and women, uh, suggestions on where they can start. You know, this is the simplest thing that I can that I can tell the citizens, and I can tell you that the Houston firefighters and paramedics absolutely love uh, for this to happen. Go walk into a fire station. Remember, we are here 365 days a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. When you need a beacon of hope and you just need a place to know that there are people that are going to take care of you, that's the fire station. That's the Houston firefighter way. And so go into a fire station. Go talk to the men and women. I can promise you uh, they will not only put their own lives on the line to protect and to rescue you, uh, but they love it when the citizens come by and just say hi. Go talk to them about the issues. Go look at the conditions of the fire stations. These stations are deplorable. We wouldn't put, mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't think you, Zach, or anybody else uh, in, in your business would, would be okay or be acceptable to work in conditions like they do. Mm -hmm. They're already expected to go out and work in hazardous conditions on a daily basis, and we've lost too many in the line of duty. But at the end of the day, the citizen support is what keeps uh, us going mm -hmm. and what keep, keeps us motivated. So I encourage all citizens to just stop into a fire station. If you see one, pull over, go walk in, introduce yourself. I promise you'll be treated like family. Yeah. The, fi the fire service uh, is a brotherhood and sisterhood like something nobody has ever seen. We're going to take care of the people that we swore an oath to protect, and we're always going to be there for them. A simple hello can go a long way. You know, you brought me back to uh, this past summer when we had temps in the triple digits and a few of the firehouses were without yes. AC. I remember uh, ways in which the community stepped up to help those men and women um, feel a little cooler. Yeah, you know, the interesting part is is that, you know, when you when you had, and, and I don't want to keep focusing on the last administration, but I do, it's a, it's a lesson learned. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is, is that when you don't have administrations that say that there's a problem, then people don't know that uh, they, they want to come together to help solve it. But when it's intentional and you just kind of want to keep and ignore somebody, you don't solve problems. And yeah. so it was because of Channel 2, it was because of uh, the viewers. It was because of the citizens around us. In fact, there's one in particular, uh, Chelsea, who was in the community on one of the fire stations who said this is unacceptable. And she could not believe that this was going on. And unfortunately, uh, her and I worked together for many weeks. And I told her this is what Houston firefighters and paramedics have to go through every day. There are not things that are negotiable. Uh, we should be taking care of the men and women. We should always respect the service that they're doing. And we talk a lot about heroes in this day and age, but I promise you, uh, heroes is a word we do not throw around lightly. And the men and women that go out there every day deserve at least the respect to show them that, hey, you're gonna be there for us. Mm -hmm. We wanna be there for you. All good points, sir. Thank you for your service and a big thanks to all the men and women who serve our community each and every day. We appreciate you guys. Thank you, Zach. Thank you for having me on.